So thank you. Um, good morning, good afternoon, as the case may be. Hope everybody is uh, doing well and making the most of the current situation as best we can. Uh, I'm pleased to be able to present to everybody today uh, some learnings from all of the cyber attacks that we've experienced in 2020, some quite famous, some uh, less well known. Uh, if you'll indulge me real quickly about myself, I have done stuff. I will continue to do stuff. Almost all of it has been in the field of control system cybersecurity, and I look forward to more of it. That's enough about me. Let's talk about the topic at hand, and that is what happened in 2020. Uh, there were nine public reports of process downtime due to cyber attack. Uh, that's not to say that there are only nine times that uh, plants were attacked in 2020, but only nine were made public. There's many, many reasons why there could be attacks that don't make this list that aren't known to us. Uh, and that's a presentation for another time about information sharing and uh, how we can continue to actually do our proper root cause analysis. But that's for another time. All of these attacks, every one of these publicly known, publicly disclosed industrial process downtime reports, all of them are ransomware. Uh, it's interesting to note that, you know, does that, what does that mean for our future? Well, I mean, for starters, the, the takeaway here is that this was a class of attack that was nation state caliber only a couple of years ago. Uh, this is new. This is professional business now, albeit criminal business, but nonetheless professional business. This is targeted money-making opportunities. Uh, and because of that, we can expect it to continue because as we can see, it has been prof profitable for the criminal enterprises who are engaging in this sort of activity. I would be remiss if I did not spend a little time talking about SolarWinds, the sunburst malware, uh, possibly, uh, the biggest breach of all times, most significantly, the, the most significant breach of 2020. Um, you now we hear 18,000 sites is the number that gets tossed about. Um, there, this may be slightly inflated, but it's not all that out of the realm of possibility. Uh, the key takeaway here is that this should be classified as a near miss for those of us in control systems and operational technology uh, because of a couple of things. Um, you know, the, for those who don't know, Sunburst was a remote control um, malware, a rat that uh, was inserted into security updates for a product named SolarWinds Orion, um, which is heavily utilized uh, by many information technology uh, practitioner, practitioners and engineers um, and often used for entire enterprises, possibly to include our operational uh, equipment. Uh, so the, the reason to classify this as a near miss uh, is very simple. There were 200 sites that were actively exploited by this malware through command and control. Uh, but to date, we have no public reports of any industrial downtime due to this malware. Uh, there is no report of any operational network compromise due to this attack. It's a near miss, but it is a significant warning shot for us to take heed for the future. So we take what's going on in 2020 and we combine it with uh, other trends. 
uh, the industrial cloud is a significant trend. Uh, it, it, there's many factors driving cloud adoption, you know, the, the need for efficiency, uh, cost at scale, and th these are the things driving cloud adoption at an enterprise level. And in the industrial space, a lot of it has to do with our vendors. Our vendors um, now for monitoring and support, no one gets on a plane anymore, especially in 2020. Uh, but in general, nobody is coming on site for uh, day in, day out maintenance, uh, day, day in, day out monitoring. Uh, internal analysis, external regulatory uh, reporting. These are additional drivers for cloud adoption. And all of these are creating additional potential attack vectors and new attack paths. Uh, every connection uh, that we create, particularly VPN connections with our partners, uh, these create encrypted tunnels. Uh, from our vendors, from our partners, from our management. Uh, we have, we still have difficulty seeing into the encrypted tunnels. Uh, what does that mean? That means it might be uh, monitoring or maintenance going through that tunnel, or it might be an attack. We know that all attacks are information. So when we can't see the information that's passing through the VPN, uh, we are potentially exposing ourselves. Armed with all of this, we can consider exactly what we expect to see uh, in 2021 and the future of attacks, uh, the future of ransomware. The ransomware time bomb is going to be a significant tool uh, going forward. What is a ransomware time bomb? Well, a, a threat actor breaks into the software update system of uh, an industrial software vendor. Probably a less than sophisticated vendor, but uh, you know, nonetheless, we now have a ransomware executable embedded in a recently posted update to software that we run in our facility. Uh, this creates a significant challenge. You know, many of this vendor's customers are going to test the, the software. Of course, we test. We don't deploy uh, updates right to the floor of the uh, uh, of our facilities. You know, they need testing. Uh, of course, un the unfortunate reality is our tests are not going to uncover the time bomb because the time bomb doesn't do anything until it's activate until its activation date. Uh, six months, a year in the future. Um, you know, we're, we're not going to see anything suspicious here. Um, as a result, when it is activated, you know, we, we, we've got multiple facilities overrun. Uh, we'll be crippled at all of our facilities simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the threat actor is going to get rewarded. They're going to get paid because we, we can't respond. Our IR team is overwhelmed. Um, so let's evaluate these defensive strategies. We have two basic concepts and constructs available to us. Uh, we have a software-based uh, defensive strategy or a hardware-based unidirectional uh, defensive strategy. Um, real quickly, um, you know, because not everybody is familiar with the hardware-based uh, strategies, uh, you know, I, I, I just mentioned the unidirectional security gateway technology. Uh, just to explain real quickly, it's quite simple uh, that it's elegant in its simplicity. It's uh, integration uh, with risk minimization. It's so that's all that's what we're talking about. One way hardware to replicate server, emulate protocols from one network to another, uh, making information available to those who need it, make those servers available to those who need it, uh, replica servers rather than production servers. Um, so back to the evaluation, 
you know, what's going to happen? Uh, well, first of all, this is not a new concept. Think back, think Havix. You know, what was that? 20, 2014, definitely not new, but going to experience a rebirth given what we've seen. Um, our software based defenses can't stop this. You know, even whitelisting um, is not going to be effective here uh, because the, the ransomware is embedded in a permitted executable. Uh, we're, we're just not going to be able to stop an attack of this nature uh, with software based defenses. You know, hardware based defenses, uh, yeah, uh, pivoting, pivoting attacks don't work when, when you're going through uh replica servers uh you know and, and the bonus here is that we can uh test for longer test these updates for longer because of the enhanced protection of the one-way hardware uh, so how about another uh concept another uh new idea we're going to see in 2021 uh yeah it's not new it's the same old remote access Trojans we've come to know and love on the IT networks. This is a standard RAT command and control. Um, and yeah, we're, we're getting to the point where we do in fact know how to deal with this. Even with uh, software-based defense, if we're doing the hard work to implement it properly, um, we've got to make sure that we have the rigorous testing, the rigorous implementation of our firewalls configured to permit only access to specific internet sites, um, possibly through additional hops, uh, taking additional protections, uh, additional scans, additional timeframes for testing, um, and uh, blocking the command and control uh, authentication and communication based on uh, the best reports available to us. Um, or, you know, we could, you know, keep it simple and with, a, with the hardware-based technology, it's not a router, it's not a firewall, it's not gonna send anything back in, even if, even if somehow uh, the, the C2 server did get uh, contacted. Unfortunately, that's probably, you know, very 2019 in terms of criminal activities. You know, it's probably not the thing we have to worry about the most. Now, let's think about 2020. And this is another thing that we saw. This is uh, effectively the sunburst attack, uh, management ransomware. Um, yeah, th this is uh, the systems that are commonly deployed. Uh, to manage other systems. Uh, it might be something like SolarWinds Orion that exists on the IT networks to manage all of the IT stuff and possibly uh, some of the enterprise uh, tools um, such as, you know, that are here to manage IT and ICS, uh, all vendor installations at all of our plants at all industrial facilities in our enterprise. Um, these are sophisticated attacks. Uh, you know, look at Sunburst. Uh, you know, it attacks the clients. Um, you know, same as before, but now we're talking about many sites at once. Uh, so we're really no longer talking about just overwhelming our internal incident response teams. Uh, we're talking about those external firms we have on retainer uh, for assistance in these types of uh, situations, they're going to be overwhelmed as just as much as we are. Uh, there's simply not enough staff uh, when, when this ransomware uh, affects 18,000 sites. There's not enough incident response people in the world to handle it. Um, quite simply, um, software, we, we saw it with Sunburst. It, it's not effective. We know the reasons why. Um, you know, on the unidirectional side, of course, it, with a two server design, um, that it's not getting in and that's the end of the story. What else have we got? Well, this is, you know, what a, a big thing for the future is the ransomware through the cloud, uh, industrial internet of things devices. Uh, if our IIOT vendor, 
uh, gets compromised and the ransomware gets uh, deployed as part of a firmware update process. Um, you know, we've got a real problem at that point. You know, we, it, it can be activated with, you know, what could be a seemingly benign command to the, uh, to all of our IIoT devices, the, those, uh, those cheap things that we put in place because, uh, well, because they were cheap and we could. Um, you know, software-based solutions are not going to uh, detect this. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it doesn't do anything until it's activated. There's nothing to be detected. Uh, that's the generic problem uh, with uh, detection versus protection. Uh, we need to be proactive, not reactive, in, in order to protect our uh, infrastructure. You know, we've got to make sure that nothing can get in to our production facilities that could potentially activate this ransomware. Uh, we will end up paying the ransom because we need to be uh, active and our incident response teams, including our third party incident response teams are overwhelmed. Uh, it's just where we're, we're what we're gonna see. Um, this effectively combines, uh, you know, what, what we've seen uh, over time. Uh, you know, this is ransomware, this is uh, cheap devices, this is easy updates, and, uh, you know, it's going to get more complicated. Uh, real quickly about Waterfall, we've been around for 15 years. Uh, this is who I work for. If we, had, if we were live, I'd invite you to our booth. Um, unfortunately, uh, we can't be there in person. Hopefully, we'll see everybody in 2022. Um, I do want to make mention of some resources that we do make available, uh, such as our podcast, our videos online, and the book, Secure Operations Technology. These are all available. They're all free. These are not about waterfall security. These are about industrial cybersecurity. Uh, these are resources that we find uh, people need. Today is somebody's first day in industrial cybersecurity. They need this information uh, so that they're brought up to speed. Um, they need this information so we're not going down the same path we've gone down in the past. And I'd encourage everybody to check these out, whether you're, you're new, you're seasoned, or uh, you're looking to hire somebody for, for your team to augment. So the grand finale, um, this is where we're headed. This is the combination uh, for our future. It's a combination of supply chain attacks, ransomware, and it poses a serious threat to our infrastructure. Um, this, is, this is the challenge. And uh, to be quite honest, when we look at things like IIoT and uh, integration uh, across enterprise, we open the opportunity for cloud amplification of these types of attacks. And that's going to be a complex challenge uh, and it's getting more complicated every day. Uh, we, we need to make sure we're going after the simple solutions rather than uh, making things difficult for ourselves. Uh, I, I did, my contact information is there at the bottom. I didn't encourage anybody with any questions. Uh, if we don't get to them right now, then please do reach out to me via email. Uh, it's, it's a good way to stay in touch uh, if anything uh, should come up. Uh, as a reminder, we hear it all the time. It's not if, it's not when. All this, uh, all these uh, fundamentally flawed type statements. Remember, we only need uh, to break the ICS kill chain reliably once. We need to do it uh, only once. The same way the attackers only need to succeed once, we only need to succeed once. It needs to be reliable. Thank you very much. If we have time for questions, I'd love to hear them.